A man gives 50% of his savings of Rs. 84,100 to his wife and divided the remaining sum among his two sons A and B of 15 and 13 years of age respectively. He divided it in such a way that each of his sons, when they attain the age of 18 years, would receive the same amount at 5% compound interest per, year, per annum. The share of B was. Options have been given here. 20,000, 20,050, 22,000 or 22,050. Alright. So, look at the uh, question and try to understand it now. So, he says a man gives 50% of his savings. What is his savings totally? 84,100. So, out of this 84,100, he has given 50% to his wife and divided the remaining sum. What is the remaining sum? If 50% is given to wife, the remaining 50% is divided up between his two sons, right? Among his two sons, A and B, who are 15 years and 13 years of age, respectively. A is 15 years old and B is 13 years old, right? Now, he has divided this amount in such a way that each of his sons, when they become 18 years old, right? When they attain the age of 18 years, would receive the same amount at 5% compound interest per annum would receive the same amount at 5% compound interest per annum find the share of b is the question here so what what does it mean see very clearly out of 84100 50% has gone to the wife and 50% is divided between the sons a and b right this 50% goes to wife how much is the 50%? 50% of 84,100, which is 42,050. So, 42,050 is gone. Right? What is remaining? This 50% is, again, another 42,050. Now, this 42,050 has been divided between A and B. Remember, A is 15 years old and B is 13 years old. Now, the amount has been divided in such a way that when both these guys become 18 years old, right? when each of his sons attain the age of 18 years, they would receive the same amount. He has currently divided 42,050 in such a way that when both the children, when both the sons become 18 years old, they will get the same amount from the bank. So it is like this. Basically, what has happened is instead of giving the amount to A and B, he has divided this 42,050 in two parts. He has deposited A's part in the bank and B's part also in the bank. At what rate? At 5% compound interest per annum. The bank says we will pay you 5% compound interest per annum. Now, he has divided the amount in such a way that See, both the children would get 5% per annum compound interest. But the amount was divided in such a way that when both of them become 18 years old, the amount paid by the bank to each one of them is same. They would get the same amount from the bank. Are you able to follow? So try and understand. If, if they have to become 18 years old, if both have to become 18 years old, which means A has to spend 3 years and B has to spend 5 years. Are you able to follow? When would A become 18 years old? After 3 years. Yes or no? after 3 years. When would B become 18 years old? After 5 years. So basically A's amount is kept in the bank for 3 years, B's amount is kept in the bank for 5 years. They will attain 18 years of age. Now what the bank pays to A after 3 years and the bank pays to B after 5 years is same. That is the question. I mean that is the point. Are you able to follow? So there are basically two different cases. Let us assume principal of A plus principal of B is equal to 42,000. 50. The total principal amount is 42,050, where PA denotes amount given to A and PB denotes the amount given to B. The time for A is equal to 3 years. The time for B is equal to 5 years because they have to attain 18 years of age. The rate of interest for A is equal to the rate of interest for B, which is equal to 5 percentage. And remember, this is a compound interest case. What he says is the amount received is same. What do you mean by amount? The total amount. So when you put something in the bank, what do you get? What do we get? We will get the total amount, right? So the amount received is same. So amount received by A is equal to the amount received by B. How do you calculate amount? You know the formula for amount, right? Amount is equal to P into 1 plus R by 100 whole to the power of T. Use this formula. So amount received by A after 3 years is equal to amount received by B after 5 years. Do the calculation and I am sure we will get the answer. Okay, so let's do that. So amount received by A, P A into 1 plus 5 by 100 whole to the power of 3 equals to P B into same 1 plus 5 by 100 whole to the power of 5. Now if you observe, this is like x power 3 and this is x power 5. 
you know what happens right this becomes 2 right a power m by a power n is equals to a power of m minus n so you know we, we can subtract 3 from 5 it will become 2 so basically what do we get now now if you simplify this next step what happens what do we get p a by p b p a by p b equals to what 1 plus 5 by 100 whole square 1 plus 5 by 100 whole square 1 plus 5 by 100 is 105 by 100 105 by 100 This is basically 21 by 20, right? 21 by 20. So 21 square, 441. 20 square, 400. That's it. You're done. You know that PA is to PB, the ratio is 441. 441 by 400. And PA plus PB is 42,050. You know the ratio. You know the total amount. Can you find out the individual amounts? Yes. He's asking us to find out the share of B. What will the share of B? PB. What is PB equal to? PB will be equal to 400 parts. Remember, ratio is 441 by 400. 400 parts out of 841 parts. Total 400 plus 441 is 841. So PB will be equal to 400 by 841 multiplied by total amount 42,050. What is the smart way of doing the calculation? Don't take it as 42,050. Take it as 84,100 by 2. That's what is it is, right? It is half of 84,100. So I can actually take it as 84,100 by 2. So it, it is like this. It goes 100 by 2 times. You're able to follow 100 by 2 times. I mean, I mean, I'm doing that calculation mentally. I hope all of you have followed it. 100 by 2 is 50 times. You're getting it. 42,050 can be taken as 84,100 by 2. 84,100 by 841 is 100. 100 by 2 is 50. 400 into 50. How much is 400 into 50? 20,000. So the share of B is 20,000 rupees, which is option 1, which is option 1. You get it? Option one.